Canada is not only neglecting its military capabilities, it is also telling members of the Canadian Armed Forces and the Department of Defense that their performance evaluations and promotions depend on how they demonstrate inclusive behavior. And no, this is not an April Fool's joke. Geopolitical instability is on the rise. The Ukraine-Russia conflict proves that history is not over. Conflicts and wars do happen and are likely to continue to happen as the world's geopolitical order changes. Ideologues are infiltrating Canadians' military, or at least so it seems that's what's going on based off of documents I had just received today. So today, April 1st, April Fool's Day, unfortunately, an email was sent out to members of the Canadian Armed Forces and public servants at the Department of National Defense. The email said that beginning April 1st, 2022, so today, members of the military and Department of National Defense would be, quote, evaluated on whether they demonstrate inclusive behavior. And I have that full email that I'm going to do the readout for and corresponding documents which explains what exactly this policy will look like and what exactly is considered inclusive behavior and what is the structure moving forward and what they call cultural change within the Canadian Armed Forces that I guess the government is seeking. The email starts out saying, Team, the nature of our work at the Department of National Defense and the Canadian Armed Forces means There will always be new challenges to focus on, whether at home or abroad, but we still need to continuously push ahead with long-term priorities, like the well-being and sustainability of our organizations. As part of that work, you'll continue to see the concept and practice of inclusive behavior factored into how we recruit, train, retain, and promote all defense team members. Inclusive behavior is a key component of treating one another with dignity and respect, both of which build critical trust between team members. It's not a new expectation of defense team members. However, previous performance management and assessment tools did not explicitly define or identify inclusive behaviors, leaving staff and supervisors alike unclear about what was expected. This is why we are phasing in changes to make expectations more clear and all of us more accountable for meeting them. So the email continues and then says, now beginning on April 1st, 2022, the performance of all defense team members, be they D&D public service employees or CAF members, will be evaluated on whether they demonstrate inclusive behaviors. What this means for you. Performance management and evaluation done properly should involve continuous feedback over the entire fiscal year. These changes means that identifying, understanding, and demonstrating specific examples of inclusive behaviors will be part of the performance management process. As a member of the defense team, you will strive to demonstrate inclusive behaviors throughout the year, and you will have discussions with your supervisor about these behaviors as part of your performance evaluations. So I know what you're thinking. What's so bad about inclusive behavior? I agree. There's nothing really bad about that. I mean, it's the military. I would assume most people there are respectable individuals who want to include everyone because it's you're part of a very large team with a very specific mission in mind. But the issue with this, as I dug into the documents I received, this was the first of which, which kind of gave me a eyebrow lift as to what exactly is this inclusive. This sounds like a buzzword. This this is not very clear what this means. Why would promotions be based upon inclusive behavior? It's the military. It should be based upon performance, you know, your duties. Can you, all these different aspects that you would usually expect to be part of a promotion at, in the military. Meritocracy, I guess they call it. However, as I parse through one of the two docu- other documents I received, it became a little more clear exactly what was going on. So I'll read 
those documents as well. So 2.4, inclusion. What exactly is this? Once again, very vague, but it says inclusion can be defined as a collective culture in which people feel valued, respected, connected, psychologically safe, involved in decision-making, recognized as having unique characteristics that contribute to organizational success and empowered to bring their authentic selves to the workplace. For CAF members, this definition implies that inclusion comprises, but is not limited to, recognizing, understanding, and valuing every person's uniqueness, understanding that diversity is multidimensional, differences in values, culture, gender, opinions, language, and employment, but must remain within the bounds of regulations, orders, and directives, fostering an environment that encourages and allows all to be heard, treating others fairly by using unbiased and transparent organizational practices and valuing authenticity and honesty as long as they are expressed respectfully in accordance with CIF regulations, orders, and directives. And then as I moved further along, there was a lot of discussion in this document about psychological safety. And when the military comes to mind, you're not always going to be psychologically safe. You're going to be put in positions that maybe push the bounds of your psychological abilities or safety. You see things that the average Canadian or person may not normally see. So on 2.8 psychological safety, it says psychological safety is defined as being able to show and employ oneself without fear of negative consequences of self-image, status, or career. It is about how someone perceives and presents themselves at work while remaining within the bounds of regulations, orders, and directives. And it continues saying policy direction, context. And this is about why exactly this document is needed etc. So it says ongoing cultural change efforts within the CAF seek to realign defense culture and the professional conduct of its members with its core values and ethical principles. As a public institution that must uphold public trust, it is essential that these efforts succeed. To do so, CAF members at all levels of the organization must both embrace and embody the character strengths required to create and sustain a diverse and inclusive culture. Although there is no agreed upon definition of character, there is some consensus that it includes values, virtues, example, moral character, and personality traits that work together to promote effective behavior and that judgment is central to the demonstration of character. It says CAF leaders at all levels are integral to creating and sustaining a diverse and inclusive culture. Their ability to provide a psychologically safe environment for their personnel that fosters honest communication and participation by everyone will be key to the success of the CAF's ongoing cultural change efforts. As a first step that supports these efforts, CAF members will be provided with direction regarding action items they must engage in to support efforts to develop and sustain an inclusive culture and have the opportunity to demonstrate the results of their efforts. This will be accomplished through the annual performance appraisal process. And then it continues to 3.3 operating principles. Underpinning the ethical principle of respect the dignity of all persons is the concept of inclusion. CAF members at all levels are expected to embrace inclusion and exemplify inclusive behaviors. Only by doing so can CAF members meet the inherent intent of this principle. Further, leaders at all levels are expected to develop, guide, and be a role model to their personnel in implementing inclusive behaviors in their day-to-day work and foster an environment within which all personnel can thrive. And most of this doesn't sound too bad, but the issue I'm encountering with this document is the level of vagueness in exactly what this all means. 
you know, what does this mean for you as a personnel? What does inclusion exactly mean? Because of course you want to be inclusive. You don't want to, you know, have anyone mistreated for their gender or their race or what religion they're part of, et cetera. But the vagueness also leaves the door open for these policies to be abused by some people who may be offended for whatever reason it may be, if you don't use their pronoun or if you don't ask their pronoun or, if, you know, what we hear about microaggressions, where are you from or something like that, that someone doesn't intend to be offensive, but then they get reprimanded. They may lose a promotion because they didn't show inclusive behavior. While I'm sure there's probably a process where that wouldn't hurt you, that your supervisor brings you in, discusses, hey, don't do microaggressions. It's still creating a culture of fear within the military, which I guess there is some sort of culture of fear in most military operations, but this is a different sort of one. This is a more political type of fear. So the next part of the document goes into the process of what it is and what action items are needed to develop a diverse and inclusive culture in the Canadian Armed Forces. So one of the more interesting action items I saw within the process was step four. They will be giving members of the Canadian Armed Forces inclusive evaluation ratings that just seems kind of strange. You got an A, you are super inclusive. You got a B, you were you could do better. You got a C, you got a lot of work to do. You got a D, a lot, a lot of work to do. You didn't do a good job. But F, oh boy, you're not getting that promotion anymore. That's sort of how I see that envisioned because I'm not part of the military. I've never been part of the military. I've only been to school and that's sort of how school worked or percentage, 70%, same difference. So I just wonder exactly how that works out. What will your rating look like? It sounds a little like a credit score, a social credit score, something like that. I don't know what that is though. Which in this document so far has been kind of Orwellian in its absolute vagueness. No one could dare say they oppose inclusion, but how does the power in place define inclusion? This is, this is a major problem in this document and in that email, because what you and I may think is inclusive, inclusive or what you may think is inclusive versus me are completely different things. And the fact that you're going to get this social credit score type of thing in the armed forces is kind of troublesome. It's, I would be concerned. I think that's exactly why I got these documents where people were conform, where people were concerned. So on the next page or the next section is action items. So I'm just going to go through a few of those. So it again says inclusion can be defined as the collective culture in which people feel valued, respected, connected, psychologically safe, involved in decision making, recognized as having unique characteristics that contribute to organizational success and empowered to bring their authentic selves to the workplace, establishing a culture of inclusivity or Establishing a culture of inclusiveness that values diversity is a priority for CAF members and DND employees of the defense team. In light of this priority, you'll be held to the following action items for FY 2021 and 2022. So these are some of the actionable items. You will participate in executive leadership development activities aimed both at improving my understanding of inclusion and how it relates to the workplace and at improving my foundational leadership attributes. So I guess that's where they will really define what exactly is inclusion. So I'm not really sure exactly what this is for, but I guess at these leadership development activities, You'll learn more. Who knows? 
they're they're pretty smart at not really giving you all of the information in these documents. Who knows what will happen at these activities? That's something we won't really have access to. So for other members of the CIF or the defense team, they created actional items to sort of say, if you notice behavior that goes against inclusion, you're going to report that person. So it says, I will play a critical leadership role to ensure I do my part working together through the chief network to create a healthy workplace, reinforce a respectful and psychologically safe organizational culture, and take immediate action when inappropriate or improper conduct occurs, which understandable given the history of the Canadian Armed Forces and some of the sexual misconduct allegations and reports. But this still is leaving the door open for this person didn't respect so-and-so's pronoun or this person didn't ask so-and-so's pronoun or this person just made like an offhanded joke. Yeah, bad, but are you going to rat this person out and say if you don't rat this person out, will that affect your inclusivity rating? Who knows? It's vague, understandably so vague, but there are questions to be asked of what this means for the Canadian Armed Forces. So in the next document I received, we get a little more closer to what this actually means. This was a a lot better of a document than the one previously, and this is the Inclusive Behaviors and the CAF Competency Dictionary. So it really goes into what exactly you can maybe get in trouble for or what you should and should not do, what is inclusive behavior. On one of the pages, it goes into words and it says words matter. And it says, if used inappropriately, our words can create misunderstandings or express wrong intentions. And it says, use language that makes everyone feel that they are included in the conversation. When addressing a group, avoid using gender specific words like Ladies, dudes, men, or guys. Instead, use words such as everyone or team. And then it says, use words, expressions, or assumptions that make everyone feel that they are included in the conversation. Chairperson, not chairman. Sailor, not seaman. (laughs) Um, This kind of reminds me of Justin Trudeau when he said, we're not mankind, we're people kind or person kind whichever one that was. And then it says, ear on the side of caution and avoid using terms slash expressions that might be considered offensive or pejorative or language that encourages stereotypes. And they give a list of examples once again. Use the boss is upset instead of the boss is on the warpath. Newly hired instead of low man on the totem pole. I feel cheated instead of I feel gypped. And then other things like say she is transgender instead of I hear he's a tranny. (laughs) As another example is use, let's get moving instead of hurry up ladies when addressing a group of men, which implies women are slower slash weaker. The CAF dictionary competency dictionary says. And then it says, Become an ally. Learn that the challenges that your colleagues face, speak up in your own so- social circles, and amplify the voices of those who may not feel heard. This doesn't exactly sound like a military. It sounds more like a social gathering. A political activist is saying these things. And then next it says, take time to educate yourself either by directly and politely asking or through professional development, formal slash informal. It says, ask, which gender pronoun do you prefer? Asking is a sign of care for the person you are talking to and a way to give them the space to feel comfortable with their identity. And then it says, be accepting, not defensive. If someone points out that the terms slash expressions you are using are offensive to them, instead work with and listen to others to find more appropriate words and make a concerted effort not to use the terms again in the future. You may slip up on occasion, but your efforts will be noticed. And then it says, consider various sources of information. 
example, webinars, blogs, courses, when educating yourself on the topics of diversity and, and inclusion. Interesting. And then it says body language, yours and those of your audience speaks volumes. So not only should you be concerned about what you're saying and how you're saying it and the terms you're using and very specific terminology when you address people, you also have to think about how your body language affects other people. So it says your own body language, example, rolling your eyes while interacting with others may freeze, discourage, or make whoever you're talking to uncomfortable. The body language of your audience may signal their discomfort or lack of understanding. So it says when communicating to a group, there are other things you may need to consider. So you have to consider more than that too. So whenever possible, communicate in both official languages or allow the opportunity for others to express themselves in their language of choice. During a briefing, use a level of language that is appropriate to the audience. Generic expressions are better suited for a group environment, while more specific expressions can be used when one-on-one. -on -one. For example, using happy holidays when addressing a group where the religious beliefs of all members may not be known, but Merry Christmas, Ramadan, Happy Annika, et cetera, when speaking to an individual whose religious background you know. So always be scared of offending anyone in the military. Got it. So there's more that they want you to do. So it says, people need to feel welcomed. Support the participation of all members of the team by making everyone feel that they have something to share. Encourage all team members to participate in achieving team goals. Promote the benefits of diverse ideas, experiences, and achieving team goals. I, I feel like this is a university course and we are in a class together when we're in the military and we're on a group assignment and everyone's input matters equally, even though in practice, we all know that's not true. But this, this is the military we're talking about. We want everyone's input. So it says, gain a perspective on diverse ideas by seeking out and collaborating with those who are different from you. Nothing wrong with that, but sometimes in the military, I'm not sure exactly if that's necessary. It says, maintain a positive attitude towards inclusivity. Opinions count, and being seen as not supportive of everyone can create issues. Watch for such be cognizant of people being excluded or excluding themselves and take steps to encourage them. This may motivate them to participate. I feel bad for all the shy people. They're going to be greatly in uncomfortable situations. <laughs> So it says, people need to know their voice counts, allowing all team members the opportunity to meaningfully contribute to the discussion. Allow members to share their ideas without speaking over them or speaking louder to get your point across. Listening infers acceptance. Avoid dismissive or confrontational language when responding to someone else's ideas slash opinion. For example, if you don't agree with someone, instead of saying, I'll push back a bit, you could say, I'd like to offer another perspective. What's, what's wrong with pushing back a bit? That, that creates some of the best conversations, some of the best understandings. It's actually saying, I want to push back on that idea a little, you know, here's an alternative. And, you know, you don't have to always be scared walking on eggshells. I think Justin Trudeau wrote this whole thing. And then it says, people need to feel the team reflects who they are. To feel included, members need to see themselves as part of the team. Seek out advice to assist in building inclusive teams. For example, engage opinions from diverse groups to assist in making the team more welcoming. Get to know about and use the unique skills, knowledge, and experiences of all team members appropriately so they feel included. So when you're on the battlefield, make sure you are getting every single person's input and make sure you go around and make sure it's as inclusive and as diverse of a decision as possible. You know, when you have to make those split second decisions, but don't mind that. It says facilitate the onboarding of new team members by getting to know their unique qualities. Seek regular feedback from your team about what's working in areas 
for improvement. Promote team activities that include a wide range of interests so all have the opportunity to contribute, encouraging others to accept new ways of doing things. And most of this, I think, is normal. This not necessarily normal, but this is definitely something that should be encouraged. You know, when you're in the military, when you're in the armed forces, you are part of a team. You work with so many people, but we also can't discourage, you know, making sure that the individual is fine and independent and can do things on their own. Doesn't always have to go to other people to ensure that their ideas or whatever they're going to do is correct. This could actually create issues in a combat situation or in an intelligence situation where you're too slow because you're waiting for help from other people because you have, you know, once you've entered the military or the Canadian Armed Forces, you have been so reliant on this team building exercises and getting input from everyone that you are unable to do tasks on your own. And this definitely can present a lot of issues I I could imagine. Like for example, the next section says, ensure you consult all groups slash key stakeholders and that their input is taken into consideration. You know, not in every instance is this possible. Not in every instance is this practical either. And it just seems like this is really getting so bureaucratic in in the structure they're trying to create while they may have good intentions it seems really just a headache at the end of the day depending on it and it, it can be harmful for you know new people in this structure and then it says take responsibility for your actions understand that you may not always be right demonstrate humility and correct inappropriate behavior if someone challenges you on something you said that made another person uncomfortable acknowledge it apologize and work to avoid using the language again don't be afraid to show vulnerability be your authentic self in front of others be positive rather than defensive when challenged. Ask for time to consider and come back to the discussion if you feel you cannot be positive in the moment. This is the military we're talking about. This is not some corporation with a big HR department. That uh, This is sort of all they do. This, this seems very just a misguidance of priorities given everything that we're dealing with in modern day and given the issues within the Canadian armed forces, you know, we're not seeing a bunch of other countries do this. This seems like so misguided for what is happening in the world today. It's we're creating people who are not going to be prepared for what could happen in the world. And like I said, in the beginning of the video, Ukraine and Russia conflict should just show that war is, you know, very much there. It's very much at our door and our militaries and their leadership are choosing to prioritize these type of things instead of actual combat training and what goes into actually having a strong military while having cohesion in a military is very important. You can't say that the other stuff is less important because there are issues. They don't have, you know, if you, if you know anything about the type of equipment the Canadian military has, and you see that this is where a lot of their time and energy is going towards, you're going to be at a loss, be very confused because this is just a weakening of the military at the end of the day when there are real issues. And then the last section of this I wanted to talk about was It says support initiatives and programs that promote inclusivity as a supervisor slash leader hold professional development sessions for subordinates to discuss what is meant by inclusive behaviors and the importance of owning up to unprofessional behavior, show courage in leading and engaging in difficult conversations on challenging topics, be an example for others by speaking up and supporting those who are different or new to your group. And it's just like, is this going to be an everyday thing? Because they said this has to be something that's all year. It's so much of this. It just sort of reminds me of when I was in university and at the beginning, you have to do this course about, you know, sexual assault and all these things. And I just remember it was somewhat ridiculous the way they were speaking 
two students as if you know, the men in the room were already rapists and they already assaulted women and everything they do is wrong. And I, I spoke up for the men because I could see it was making them very uncomfortable. The language that the people who are doing these, um, I don't know what they're called, like development sessions, the type of terminology they're using, it was, it was pretty offensive and just calling men, like as if they don't know what sexual assault is. I think many men do know what sexual assault is. And it's 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 kind of weird to pretend as if they don't and that everything they've done in their life is wrong up until this point. So it just kind of reminds me this is feeling like that, but on a daily, weekly basis, it's very woke. Oh, no, 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 I was wrong. There's more sections I want to talk about. They want people to do this, not just while they're on duty, but also when they're off duty. It says, adhere to the concept of inclusivity both on and off duty. That is, don't act inclusive when others are watching and then change those behaviors when behind closed doors. They also say, if you inadvertently use inappropriate words or behaviors, immediately correct yourself and take steps to avoid that language or the behavior in the future. It says, no one is perfect, correcting honest laps, and behavior is part of learning experience. In general, being willing to admit mistakes and working with others to correct them will help increase inclusion. But what happens when someone reports you, when you've already apologized and you said, oh, I made a mistake. I'm so sorry. That person still might report you. And what happens to your inclusivity rating? Do you not get that promotion? What exactly happens? I see that there's this slippery slope because in any structure, there is competitiveness. Everyone wants to make it to certain place in the organization. And anyone who says otherwise is lying that most people don't go into a structure unless they want to climb some sort of ladder and military is no different than that. People want to climb a ladder. So this could be used to hurt other people for your own benefit. Your inclusivity rating could go much higher for maybe telling on someone for their lack of inclusivity or a slip up, a mistake, something that was, you know, misunderstood. It seems like There's a door open for abuse. And there's so many more sections I could go over. This document is 15 to 16 pages of do's and don'ts and things you should do, which seems pretty difficult to really swallow and remember everything that's expected of you. And it seems like there's a large expectation to do everything right. Of course, there's this emphasis on if you make a mistake, you can apologize, etc. But this is creating not only what they call a culture of inclusivity, this is creating a very toxic culture, in my opinion, at least, where people are always walking on eggshells. Why would you want you know, to replace a structure or a culture that you think is wrong with another culture that may also have faults? I, I it seems like this may be misguided, not done maybe correctly. This is just so much. There's just, there's a lot going on in this document. It seems as though they're trying to make the military into the most ultimate safe space in existence. This is a safer space than any university campus, any other government job, anything else. This is almost ridiculous. I I can't understand how a place like the military could be even thought of being as safe as a, safe of a place as they're trying to make it. When you're in the military, you are going to be challenged. You're going to be put in positions that not many people are ever going to have to be put in and you are choosing to put yourself in these positions. When you enter the military, you are basically signing your life away. You are accepting that you could die. So if you sign a document like that and then you're getting all this type of treatment, you have to be super inclusive. 
nothing wrong with being normally inclusive, but this goes beyond just being inclusive and, you know, not discriminatory. This is very much like policing each other, making sure each other say perfect things and that you're perfect all the time and political correctness up the wazoo. That's, I don't think political correctness should be the same thing as inclusion. Inclusion is just making sure everyone in the team is partaking and everyone is getting to the best place that they all can. You don't have to be equal, but you just want the best for your teammates. This is far beyond this. This is politics into the military. This is extremely alarming, the amount of politics. And none of these military personnel can really do anything about it. They're subordinate. They have to listen to their command. Their command. So it's really up to other people to be calling out what is going on. And this is just kind of a continuation of what we're seeing with. So what do you think about this revelation and these documents and the email I received. Do you think this is the way forward for the Canadian military? Do you think this is the way forward for all militaries? Let me know down in the comments and make sure to subscribe to me and you can follow me everywhere at the Marie Oaks. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.